All right, everybody, welcome back to the Property Pods. I've got uh, Johnny Mac and Patrick Berry. What it is, Aaron? How you doing, buddy? What a beautiful morning. It's absolute cracker out there. Yeah, I am actually looking forward to summer. I feel like we should have the... um, the kit that Pat took to Vegas and we should be outside recording this just out in the sun. Oh, it's just like those. You know how everyone takes those photos of sitting their laptop at a pool going, oh, yeah. this is how you work? That well, never happens. <laughs> just with that, your feet in the shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just in the shot. That, no one does that. Well, we could do no, it. No we, one does that. We could get the kit. We could well, go sit out there. I like to beg dipper there. Oh, yeah. Abby did end a month on a cruise boat in the middle of the Pacific once. Ooh, Abby! <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to take a photo and put it out there because she said the same thing, that nobody does that stuff. So that's an ad for Property Me right there, isn't it? Yeah. She just was trying to get the um, trip as a tax deduction. She yeah. was just like, if I have a photo of this, it'll yeah. count. <laughs> All right, boys, so we're back today. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. We've got a guest in, which I'm very excited about. We'll throw to her very soon. But I just wanted to let you know, John, that the little story we told last week, Ari, you staying on my mum's couch, yep. um, the toothbrush incident, as we like to call <laughs> it in my family, uh, was a big hit amongst listeners. Not That's only cool. did my mum say a shout out that she now needs to think of a story about Pat from our <laughs> older years, but... Um, I also had, uh, yeah, Mark Stewart from over in the Netherlands. He was listening. He goes, oh, classic Johnny Mac. <laughs> he goes, I knew John 2.0 was too good <laughs> yeah, to be yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know there, I mean, there's, there are more stories of, yeah, right in that, that time period. Oh, yeah. Where your, your mum and your dad weren't the only parents who experienced that for almost identical situation where my friends just didn't end up at their own house. <laughs> what was I going to do? And look, when, they, when their kids didn't arrive, you arrived. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just, just to make them feel safe. Yep. No. So speaking of parents... Um, real estate royalty in real today. estate. Yes. yes. Well, the first woman of First National Real Estate we've got in, we have Julie McGregor, your mother, John. My mother, yeah. Mm. Hey, Mum. Good morning, guys. Welcome, Julie. Thank you yeah. for coming in. If you missed the story last week, what I was describing was a time that me and John had been out probably on a work night and we might have had some pre-drinks at Mum and Dad's house and I assume your car must have been still, still, still at my, my place and that would have been, yeah. your, oh, we'll go back to my car. Yep. But so... I didn't end up staying at mum and dad's, but John did. Because that was the agreement. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> Very kind of your mum. Yes, no. Look that at was it. John's agreement. That was John's agreement. So anyway, we got split up out on the town and then as we as the morning arose, John's on the couch and dad's come out and he's, oh, morning, John. Oh, hello, Mr. Horn. How are you? And then, oh, Maren's not here, John. Oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> oh. Oh, do you happen to have a spare toothbrush I can borrow? <laughs> so that story's gone down in uh, Horn family history as the time Johnny Mac came to stay I'm all, all by himself. With, I'm, <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> Lucky they allowed you to stay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they had no choice. No, <laughs> you, I you woke just, up. You, you just woke up there. Well, any, anyway, it's uh, yep. lovely to have you in here, Julie. Could you tell the listeners out there, we know a lot about you, but could you tell the listeners uh, a little bit about yourself? A little bit about myself? Okay, so I uh, commenced in uh, real estate and in property management in 1996. At the time, I think uh, John was only 10, actually. Yeah, well, mm. I um, was in the very early days of um, technology, we were still operating off a little um, road. A road roller decks, kind with of? The, with the yeah, roller decks, with the tape, people would come in and pay their rent. And oh, so you had to do trust account in the old school way. In the old I school I learned that in the training courses, and that is incredibly hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a good way to learn, though, because it, um, it teaches you how to, because mainly people learn now just off technology and off a program. Whereas when I'm looking for something, I'm looking at ledger. At it you can look at it mm. from how you used to do with the eight bits of paper, in and the outs, and the yeah. So you track it. You can track it back. So it's a lot like when you're studying and you'll write things down to retain the information. I guess if you're doing it with something physical rather than being a something on the computer screen, it's like oh yeah, I'll pass that off and watch YouTube instead. Yeah, <laughs> and being able to touch it actually probably is very very beneficial. Yeah. Well, the other thing too, I suppose, when you look into, I mean, you've got thousands of transactions to go through. Those computer programs are still built on the same fundamental principle. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are. They're built on exactly the same principle. And the early uh, models, of course, was all DOS. And they were really only built for doing the trust accounting. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, 
in the training course that I did as on trust accounting, they give you 20 properties and you've got to put all the rents in and then you do the end of month or via paper. Yep. And it literally took me like four hours to freaking do. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's 20 properties. Imagine we now we have, you know, roll. four or 500 properties. You'd be there for three days straight just, just trying to room. do it. <laughs> well, the problem is too with the trust accounting courses, there's no grey, it's wrong. Yeah. And then start again. Oh, well, yeah. that's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the trying to do my taxes every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Wrong. just pull my hair out and just flip my lids. I'm just like, I don't understand these numbers. <laughs> I should have paid more attention in maths. <laughs> That's why we give it to accountants. Ah, uh, yes. Well, That's, we'll have to get an accountant on and I'll have to get in their good books. That's wisdom right there. <laughs> So, Julie, you started in uh, property management. Is that what it was called in 1996 or did it have another name? Was it kind no, of... No, it was property it was always been property then. management. Yeah, yep. it's always been property management. We were the poor cousins back then. The poor cousins. Uh, so You still uh, are if you ask my wife, Julie. <laughs> yeah. They always <laughs> tell me property management's the poor cousin of sales, which I think is just rubbish. <laughs> well, you've told me the reverse. You said that without... The property management. There is no there's no sales. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they keep us alive. Yeah, no, but and that's that's really quite true. And of course, but in the early days, nobody thought about that. That was um, property management really was just a side, side business. Side business, and so therefore there was no policies or procedures. Not a lot of. I mean, there was a little bit of training, obviously, but not like now. I mean, now you've got all the coaching for property managers. You've got conferences. Conferences, you've got courses. Like it's really. Very professional. Mm. Um, and then you've got like BDMs. So like a BDM is someone that is like a salesperson. They go out and try to just find rental properties to bring into the rent roll. Like, do they wear, do they have like a whip and a leather mask? <laughs> 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 well, they probably attract a few business people. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now I know how some of these rent rolls are growing so fast around yeah. Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> but see, a BDM is different to a property manager. So a BDM thinks like a salesperson. So what, do, sorry, what does a BDM, what does that st- acronym stand for? A uh, business development manager. Okay, yeah, mm. excellent. Because yeah, so all I was picturing was that <laughs> I watched Pulp Fiction the other <laughs> day and it was, bring out the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> some train, some training places do that, but you know, <laughs> I've always tried to do like, do the twist like that. Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> such a good movie as well. <laughs> so, um, so BDMs they'll go out, they'll find your properties. Yeah, so they'll go out and source business just like salespeople do. Yep. Um, so. And um, and they you know follow up and and, ac- and actually bring the business in. So, so are they working for a separate business, or is that part of the agency? Say so you guys have a BDM on staff, or is that something? Yeah, we haven't got a BDM on staff at the moment. Some agencies but, do that, but though. a lot of yep. agencies do. Yeah, and and you know did, they'll get a, a wage if you like, and then they get paid on top on top of that with what they find and coming yeah. in and yeah, so cool. what differs with our smaller agencies is people like Julie and people like Abby they get to wear. Eight hats, yeah. and they yes. get to swap. So yes. one so day they're a BDM, the next day they're a property manager, the next day they're putting out a fire with a physical hose because they're property managers and they do everything. Ooh. We might be small, but we're mighty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like the sounds of that. that yeah, we great. just we have to multitask, don't we, Julie? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Four One Four Real Estate has been operating within the northern suburbs of Hobart since 2006. With their innovative approach to marketing and managing your property, they have all your property needs covered. Find out more by visiting them today at 414.com.au. So I guess on on my sheet here it says what does the day-to-day of a property manager look like, but it sounds like from the description there that it can be so varying and wide. Oh, it's so varying. Well, a a property manager has to be structured, so that's why we don't generally make good salespeople because we'll plan our uh, year, month, week, day, and then hopefully it all goes to plan. Yes. But, uh, you know, a, a, a day is, um, you know, every, we start at 8.30, go through our emails and have our days sort of structured. We might be doing arrears, we might be doing showings. Very systematic. So that's, I guess, for me, that's probably the difference between sales and property management. Sales is a bit sporadic. You never know what's going to happen that day. Where property management, you can actually structure. That's Get right. a lot better, can't you? Yeah, that's right. And But, of course, it gets interrupted all the time and then your day goes poof. Yeah. And you go, well, <laughs> there's that day. We'll try again for tomorrow. Start again but tomorrow. <laughs> well, speaking of structure, um, Patrick, your dad came out before who manages here at 414, but he said, oh, your guest's here today. I said, oh, Julie and John are here. And he's like, no, John's not here. Why would John be here? And I was like, 
Oh, well, you, I assume they would have come together, you know, like <laughs> John will bring his mum along for the interview. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, John's not structured like that, John. <laughs> John's just happy to let it roll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did ring me earlier this oh, morning good. to make well. sure, yeah. <laughs> Mum, will you be at the thing? <laughs> oh, come on, did you bring the lunch? <laughs> Sorry. I, I hate lunch. jam. <laughs> you, you know this. <laughs> See, I, I thought the call this morning was like, I forgot to book Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, please <laughs> save me. <laughs> well, what but that wouldn't happen with 2.0, John, would it? Not, no, no, no. Not the new guy. You're not organized. the new guy with a tie and a pocket square. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with it, I was, one of the questions we had too, Mum, was, I mean, the probably worth understanding. What is the principal role of a property manager? Like, why would someone engage one? What do they do? And then also, you know, and how is that different today than what it was when you first started? Okay, so really, I think the the main reason to engage a property manager is we have knowledge, and we're expected to keep that knowledge up, and we're required it as part of um, our license. But we keep the contact between the owner and the tenant separate. So a couple of degrees of separation. That's you're, right. You work as the, the meat and the sandwich. We're the liaison in between. So an, an owner can often get compromised by a tenant mm-hmm. um, and vice versa. So like if a tenant's suffering a bit of a hardship and wants you know, three months off their rent. and Some owners will feel some obligated. Some owners will to feel obligated to do that just because they you know, feel so kind but at the same time that they've got their own financial problems they need to do that's right so oh. a, a, the average owner is, owns one or two property as as we all know yep. um and they're only doing it to better themselves but they still have those mortgages to pay and all those bills and the rates to pay and the water and everything else that comes with a rental yeah. property and all, but also too we're there to try and um, maximize the return that an owner gets so yep. mm. we're planning three months out before or a lease expiry. We're doing the rent review to make sure that they're going to get their maximum rent. And we've got all that backup of research. And, and of course, it's available to everybody now as well. But I think when you're in the industry all the time, you know how it's all working. You know how many people... At the moment, the vacancy rate's low. Um, and they're saying there's a real housing shortage, which there is, but it's only in certain brackets. Mm. Mm. It's interesting you say that uh, most people only own one or two property and that's probably what a lot of tenants don't realise. They just assume that landlords or owners have, they're rich because they own a rental property. Exactly. But a lot of it's just mm. mum and dads that have just trying to get ahead a little bit in life and trying to set themselves up for or, later down the track. But or young kids like Blake who we had in on the podcast. like oh, Who's just a property mogul. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's playing the Monopoly board and he's just trying to complete it. <laughs> but like, I, like if someone has said, if you, you said to me, oh, we're going to get this guy in who's got this investment property, he sounds like he'd be good. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll get this eldered statesman come in and he'll have his pipe and you'll have matching fur coats. <laughs> no. But no, just a young kid young that went dude. to Dominic like us and Given it, like, having a hard crack, yeah, yeah working so, hard to get it done. Yeah, but yeah. that's where tenants don't realise. I think you need to understand that um, when you don't pay your rent, that can also have massive effects massive on the person effect. that's... Oh, absolutely. Because <coughs> a lot of people that have rental properties have quite large mortgages on them mm-hmm. and they, they don't have... Well, they so, can lose it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So... so yeah, yeah, it's, it's really important. And the other thing I think um, us as property managers are trying to do is take that headache away from our owner. Mm-hmm. So we, well, we want all of that running smoothly. So Well, everyone's lives these days are so busy, aren't they? So yep. um, I don't even know how someone might manage a property themselves in today's busy lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> Like no. it's pretty hectic. Well, and, it, and it really can be. Um, and it can be really stressful, especially if something goes wrong. I mean, how often do you have owners come to you, which Abby would have it as well, and because everything's turned to muck. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So well, it's crazy the amount of times you'll hear of, oh, this problem's arisen what at, do I do? at this time of, like, the night or something like that, and it's something that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. And I guess you can put systems in place to try and... Well, I, I remember once I was in a building in Jersey Street, it was about 11.30, and I was sweeping water off the concrete floor because the entire room had flooded because no one could get there on time. So it's just... I mean, we've had cases many times where I suppose we've been out late hours, early mornings, just trying to get onto that it. lady got locked in the bathroom. That's it, in Owen Road. Yep, yep. There was Dad, oh. dad, dad and I and Mum were there trying to help me out because the locksmith wasn't available. <laughs> But, but I suppose the one thing you said before, Mum, was get very intimate with your tenants by the sound of it, John. <laughs> that just sounds like there's a side podcast there. Yeah. Like, like after hours. Yeah, uh, after hours race. with McGregor First National. Yeah, but, but the thing was, too, I mean, take, take that Jersey Street example. I mean, the owner was living interstate and they were completely stressed out of their mind wondering what's happened. So there was no other option but to get there, you know, really late 
take some photos so they could be confident that the place was, it was you know, it was safe, it was okay, we've got it handled, yep. um, we'll keep you updated as you need to be, and then they could rest assured. But, I mean, they were interstate. Um, and the other thing you mentioned before, Mum, you used the word knowledge, but what you suppose you meant was the understanding of the legislation and the, the rights of both the tenant and the owner that you have to manage. Mm. Could you expand on that? So people might assume that, like, oh, yeah, everyone thinks they know what their rights are, what they are, but what I suppose the, the role of the property manager is to make sure your decisions are backed by the, you, you often refer to the black and white? Yeah, so um, so this is what I, I always refer to even in a, a training session is um, when you have people come in and they come in with a problem or a complaint or there's something, always just refer back to legislation and just go black and white, take all the emotion out of it, yep. um, which is really hard to do when you're the tenant or when you're the owner. You, you naturally get all that emotion built up. So our role is to try and get that emotion out and get everyone on a level playing field so that then... It can come to the best solution. It can come to the best solution for everyone. And that's sometimes not easy. Like you said, it can be hard, especially when you're hired by the owner and sometimes the situation, according to the Act, will favour a tenant. That's and the right. owner's like, but you work for me. Yeah. Well, like we do, but in this circumstance, we're bound by what the law says. And also, too, we're still working for them because yeah. we're you know, trying to explain that they had whatever decision that they make is the right decision. Yeah. So it's mm. not going against legislation. So they're not going to face a law sleuth, sleuth, law sleuth, a law <laughs> a law <laughs> suit <laughs> because they've made they've made a, ro- a wrong decision. Those so. damn law sleuths. <laughs> <laughs> Pesky. <laughs> yeah, they get like in the, the way inter- of everything. Yeah. Seriously, they got yeah. so much the time. Law sleuths, the intergams. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it is really important. And we sort of, I mean, a property manager wears that many hats. It's amazing. It's mm. kind of crazy to think that what you have to actually do, because, yeah, Abby will come running down the hall and be like, Pat, this has happened. And I'll be like, oh, I didn't realise that's something you've got to resolve. But, mm. yeah, there's so many different kind of avenues that you're yeah. going down every Nine day. Nine times out of ten we don't have to, but we're expected to. Mm. Just because mm. people have this idea that... If it's something to do with the house, it's our job, regardless what the problem is. Yeah, and whose fault it might yeah. be. And so yeah, yeah. quite often, like you said, as like, oh, I didn't think that would be a property management issue. Yeah, it's probably not. It's just that that's what's expected of property management. So we always try to go obviously above and beyond and help an owner and tenant have a really good experience. But that does mean that a lot of the time we're doing extra things that may not actually be our job. Mm, yeah, but you just have to do it. And, and yeah. then sometimes you can be doing everything you can. Everything and still don't go and right. It still doesn't go right. Yeah. So. <laughs> And, you, and you've got to actually train yourself to let it go, you know, especially ones coming into it. They, they just don't sleep. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's, it is a real yeah, it's a di- different um, ball game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's what I don't want to do, Julie. No. I'll leave that to, to you and Abby and I'll just happily play around in sales. <laughs> a lot easier. <laughs> you've, you've worked in property management, John. Like when yeah. you came into the game, you kind of started well, there. I was, and I was working with mum and two parts, so property management, and then you and I managed – um, it's the strata arm of the business too. And what did we build that up to? Nearly 1,100 yeah. units or something? Yeah, 126 stratas. Yeah, so just a, then I was managing just over yeah, 1,100 actual individual properties. Yeah. So strata management's a little bit different in that. <clears throat> so obviously property management's managing that relationship between the tenant and the owner. Uh, but strata management is then, if you imagine a block of 10 units, they form what's called the body corporate under a completely different act. And yep. then their responsibility is to manage the common common areas for that, that complex. Building. So mum and I, well, we, yeah, we, um, what, about five years, five, six years we must have had that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we had to do our, all our own property uh, procedures and mm. policy manuals and things. Yeah, so it, um, it was a really good experience because, again, you're seeing things on a different level. Mm. So um, I used to get a lot of referral back then for us managing it manage yep. the body corporates because we actually would talk to the property managers mm. um, and this isn't against anybody in strata now that's completely changed too because when we did it a lot of people didn't recognize it well a body corporate that's something totally different and you yeah. go no that the body corporate's actually the group of owners so mm. and there were the, le- the legislation comparatively to the rest of the country was just there was no one that there was very few people even lawyers that understood the act so we had nowhere to turn so you mm. know, I, I went to queensland and did a couple of courses oh, yep. up there which is completely different but it opened us up to kind of can adapt what you've learned from up there and bring it to yeah. the black and white down here and mm. yeah cool so yeah but that was interesting you get mm. tenants within the building that weren't even our tenants and they'd 
you know, play up. And, of course, as they'd say, oh, strata manager, it's up to you to fix it. Well, it's actually not really. Yeah. But, you know. mm. <laughs> but that was where property management also, having the two hats of doing both, came in handy a couple of times, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And the problem with um, that um, those relationships, again, you're graded under different levels of legislation and acts all within the one unit. And then as a strata manager, you're, you're only responsible and have powers to the body's corporate. So if you then have uh, one of the owners, let's say a, t- a, a property privately, and then that tenant is just and we did have one building that was like this and the owner just did not care and it was one of the worst tenants you could possibly imagine Mm -hmm. but there was zero legislation that where the body's corporate could they couldn't do do anything about it nothing they could do so the tenant basically just had free reign over the complex so if they Um, got locked in the toilet you wouldn't have got the keys out to help no i'd have probably left them there. unlikely (laughs) (laughs) as a family-run business first national real estate mcgregor understands that the property market can be stressful however with a strong team in both sales and rentals we are here to guide you through the property maze find out more today at mcgregorfm.com All right, Julie, I've got a quick question for you. I, you know me, I'm a tech fan, so I like yep. to have every bell and whistle and toy that's out there. Yeah, feeling but... inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this will make perfect sense. <laughs> Starting in 96, obviously it's a lot to change from then to now and especially the later years, but what are some of the crazy things that you've seen from property management through technology over time? Like obviously changing from handwriting ledgers to using computer systems. Yep. Has there been some other things along the way that's changed? Oh, absolutely. So in the early days, some agents would hand out keys. Tenants would pay $50. I remember that when yep. I used to... Yeah. yeah, go and have a look at a property, bring the key back, they get the $50 back. How dangerous was oh, that? Oh, wow. Um, so, I mean, obviously that would That's like happen. back in the days where you could ride your bike around the neighbourhood and <laughs> as long as you're back by 6pm, the... Everyone waves. Everyone waves. Yeah, yep. They're all watering their garden. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, it's like stranger things. The glory oh, days. <laughs> There's people in there with a candle on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, but, you know, like condition reports weren't as thorough and they were sort of handwritten and very scruffy and they weren't taken seriously. I was one of the first ones that introduced photos because there was no photos back then. So we used to take the photos, take them down to the you know Kodak shop, yep. bring them mm. back, stick them on paper, <laughs> get all the tenants to sign the photos. Um, Which is such a, like, such a simple idea now. Like now we've got cameras on our phones and oh. on us all day, yep. every day. That And so, so then you only had... The DOS um, accounting system. Yep. Now, what have you got? You've got. Um, I know we have about ten tabs open with all these different programs mm. that we use on a exactly. daily basis. Yeah, inspection manager. You yeah. know, and you got you got a program that runs your inspections when tenant ring, ring in. You've got just everything that's just out there. It's crazy. Um, mm. Now lodging bonds, you do that um, via the internet. So yep. we used to collect the bond across the counter for a rental property as. Yep. yep. And, and that used to just live in our account. Now it's actually housed. By their government account, so there's a program for that, and you've got to get them to pay it into that account. And yeah, there's a lot to it now. I guess what I've been gathering from talking with Julie this morning is that it's grown into this thing that a full time person and a full time team are essential to kind of manage something along those lines. Mm. So, mm. having all these kind of extra little safeguards rather than just being a Rolodex or hey, here's a key, come <laughs> back, bucks. give us your 50 bucks. Like, imagine <laughs> just squatting in something like, oh, sweet, I'm just going to squat in this place for <laughs> yeah. $50 and I'm yeah. done. <laughs> How much rent do you pay in a week? Oh, I pay 50 each time yeah, I get yeah. a key. <laughs> then they <laughs> kick me out and I come yeah. back. <laughs> I just keep changing houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so no, technology, it's just. Amazing now. Yep. So, um, I've forgotten all about that key. The key, like yeah. the $50 bond kind yeah. of. Yeah, I remember as soon as you said it, I was like, I remember that mum used to do that back in the day and now it's just come back. I'm like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's some old uh, um, property files and ours that have been in our company for over 20 years and they've still got those those photos that they took with a little timestamp on them. Yeah, all wow. those years ago. Yeah. Actually, yeah. but no, it didn't have a timestamp because they weren't no, digital no, cameras. No, we had to. We had to it was a roll of film, yeah. And, and, then, and then, of course, we got really cluey and we'd mm. be able to put them through the computer and do it up really nicely on the thing and Ooh. get them to sign them all like, Ooh. <laughs> put in the, put in Gee, the that's publisher. looking really good. <laughs> 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 no, but look, that's you say you're feeling inadequate next to Pat with all this technology, but the idea to take photos and have that as a, a point of reference for conditions of a property is mm. such a brilliant idea that that's ahead of its time. So, Julie, you're an innovator. Oh, about that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I was, actually, I was actually just trying to protect everyone. <laughs> well, and there you go. Like it's, you just need to need to think outside the box and you've gone and done that. And I think it's a, an amazing kind of 
I love it. Well, I know there, there are a fair few posters plastered around the wall from the years of, you know, the, the awards you've won over the years, Mum. So there was some, there is some truth to it. Uh, <laughs> Real estate royalty, I said, John. Yeah, that's start. true. I haven't done it for a long, it's a long time. <laughs> I guess we're starting to get up there in a bit of time. We do have lots of other things that we, we could talk about. Just one thing I was thinking before we wrap everything up was, I know there's a lot of talk of people trying to get into properties and how difficult it is at the moment. So I was just thinking for the listeners out there who may be looking to, you know, they're an applicant, they're kind of putting their name down for lots of different things. Like what's the best way to stand out or if you're coming to a showing, what's the best way to make a good impression that then they'll be leave at the a, top of the list? Leave a memorable, positive impression, not a negative one. Behave. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there were, be on time. <laughs> um, yeah, was, so well, yeah, because I know for me, I did one the other day, and this tenant came up to me, pushed in front of everyone else that was in the line, and just snatched an application form out of my hand and walked off. And straight away, to my head, well, if that's how you're going to be with here. You're already down my list. Yeah. So, is there certain things people can do to, I guess, make a better impression so that they've got a better chance of winning a property? Because it's not that people aren't getting a property at the moment because they're no good. It's because we're getting too many too good many applications. To choose, yeah. yeah. So is there something that you can do to make your good application better than the other four or five other good applications? Be organised. Um, so if uh, be on as I say, be on time. You know, all those sorts of things. Are not exactly the same. But if you're going to go for a job, you don't turn up late and you wear um, your good clothes and you uh, show you, up and well, you not. It's not even necessarily. Yeah, we. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not even, you know, necessarily that. We had a, um, a, a, a biker actually once in one of our, our units, and he wasn't like a bikey bikey. He wasn't an outlaw bikey. But if you looked at him, he was rough as. He ended up being a tenant for about 15 years. Brilliant tenant. Yep. So mm. certainly if, if someone's coming in with an application, you want them organised. You don't, you don't want to have to be chasing them, which is what poor Amelia has to do sometimes when they come through with one form. They'll come through, they won't have all their documents, they won't have their... Um, credit checks credit, or... Yeah, the, yeah or their credit license. Credit information yeah. report. Sorry, I forgot the wording <laughs> these days. Um, um, but yeah, so they yeah, haven't... Photo they haven't, IDs and stuff, like having all that loaded in and organised. Right. And if you're up against eight or nine other people, you're going to look at the one that's organised first. So yeah, for sure. A, a history. You know, that, that, that always helps. I mean, um, you know, if they've got previous rental references, that is great. Some, not everybody has. Yep. I'm not saying they have to have them, but they, they'll have, you know, references from employers or, you know, a, again, you know, look at it like you're applying for a job. We're looking for your personality. You want to put your best foot forward. Yeah, because we don't know you. I mean, like when I'm ringing for a reference, I'm, I'm saying to them, you know, look, I'm, I'm just ringing you. I, I'm these people have applied for a property. I'm trying to build a bit of a profile because obviously I don't know them, so I'm hoping you're going to be able to help me. Yep. Is it important to actually, if you put down someone as a reference, actually give them a courtesy call and let them know that they are a reference? Because so many times yes. we'll ring someone and they're like, why are you calling me? Or yep. mm. we leave a voicemail and they call her back and say, we've got nothing to do with real estate. We don't want to buy it. Go away. But we're actually, yeah. they don't realise that it's their friend that's put them down, but they haven't actually told them that, they've put them down. So yeah, that's right. Is that something that a tenant should probably do as well, is actually just go and say, hey, do you mind being a reference for me? That's right. Um, do all the background first. So, yeah. um, you know, try and be organised. I mean, they've got one form now which allows them to, build that profile or, or fill in their application and if it's filled in properly and they've put in the time then it's already done they can shoot it off to however many agents that they, they like. like yeah. yeah so is one form like a resume builder for applications or something pretty much yeah so it's yep. like an mm. online version of applications yeah mm. so that's um just a real estate thing or that's used for other stuff or just real estate, no, just okay. real estate. so yep. it's owned by realestate.com yeah. okay so yep. yeah it's just you can it's put up like abs- everything else <laughs> <laughs> put all your information in so put your checks in put all your your references in and then if you miss out on one with us, it makes it easy to then apply with one with McGregor's because mm. you can just then click it onto a different property. Yeah, yeah, cool. Like I would have my CV on my computer and I'd always know like it's set. Yep. And if I need set to change send. it, I'd do it set and send. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well, if we, if, what about in a situation? We'll get the question. Someone's got a couple of um, bad uh, or a couple of history bits on their their personal information sheet like and they'll be like what, what do we do how, how do you coach them through applying if they're concerned that they've got bad credit history uh, well it, it, it's not just because again we had another tenant i think i don't know if you remember them or not but mm. they they lived at bridgewater actually we put them in the house and they'd been bankrupt twice now they'd been bankrupt because they'd gone into business by themselves and it can happen to anybody yeah for sure um 
uh, but they and again we had they were tenants for like twelve years. Mm. They had the best house in the street. Yeah, it looked mm. beautiful. So it's not necessarily a downside. It's it's more so like if you Maybe. saw someone had a real track record. Um, that's not going to give you a lot of confidence. So if you do have a couple of bad things on there, maybe provide some context as to why they're there why? and yeah. give an explanation. Exactly. Like, and, and they might have a payment plan set up. Yeah. Or mm. Like I know some are as bad as you've had a blood test and you didn't realise it wasn't bulk billed and then you never got the invoice because you've moved house. I think everyone's got one of those. Yeah. yeah. And then all yeah. of a sudden that's on your credit check. You owe $300 to... And it could be as yeah. little as 50 bucks too. They just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just right. mm. Oh. Yeah, well, so I'm aware of this, I better go check <laughs> yeah, my credit yeah, history. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron's like, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a blood test once. <laughs> and, and did I pay? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing too, because again, going back to legislation, we're bound by what we can and can't discriminate against too. So there's very strict rules by those guidelines, aren't there? Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, you just don't, you can't discriminate against anybody really. Yeah, exactly. So, I guess another key thing I've grabbed from that is that can't have the context all the way from application, but if you're making those calls for a referee, they might be like, ah, oh, yes, such and such has gone yeah. bankrupt twice or such and such. Like, this is the story. They're the most lovely people you'll ever meet. Mm. And then you can wrap that all up into well, the... the word into, a, into a profile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the word you just used there was something you taught me many years too, Mum, or the profile or the story. Mm. That's the thing because in that instance where you might have three different applications, one, and they'll often say to the, the client and the tenant in this case, look, we need a story to be able to tell the owner because ultimately when the true landlord... True story. A yeah. true story because mm. the... Property manager is not the one that's making the decision. It's the owner. And the owner needs as much information as they can to have yep. confidence that who's going into the property is going to be able to obviously create the best experience. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think another thing that people should be wary of as well is just make sure that your online matches your offline. So yep. like whatever oh, yeah. you've got online on the internet is telling the same story as what you're writing down on your application or what you're telling the property manager when you're in the office. So yep. yeah, like by all means, enjoy your life and have a great time, but don't feed us a, a story and then a quick Google search tells us something completely different. Like oh, Exactly, and you do Google and Bing and they can bring up different things and yep. or even a um, Facebook yeah. check and they might have two or three profiles, which some people do, there's nothing wrong with that. But mm. Or if they says, I don't have a dog or something, but then their profile pictures them this cuddling big dog, this yeah. big yeah. Beethoven looking yeah. thing. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you find a horse in a property once, Mum? Yep. <laughs> oh, was this, in, inside, the, inside the house, no, please tell no. me inside the house. <laughs> no, it was in the backyard. Uh, <laughs> is that a storyline from Rosehaven? No. no. <laughs> that wasn't, next, that was a true one. Next season. <laughs> hey, you two could do like a separate Rosehaven podcast, like <laughs> stories of Rosehaven, yeah. and you could just give context as to, well, episode one, this is actually happened when this story here happened, and you could just <laughs> break down each episode. Oh, man. This Cash is- in on your brother's success. <laughs> Well, look. Speaking of that, I just yeah. Before we sign off, I just was wondering how did how do the stories that you've trickled down through to Luke? How do you feel about the show uh, representing some of those? Um, oh instances? well, he, well, he always tweaks them into his own little um quirky mind, and he's got his own little way. Yep. But um, the story about the throwing the spider over the fence, for instance. Yes. That, that is this a McGregor favourite? Because that's the <laughs> that one John went true. to first as <laughs> yeah. well. Oh, well, it is. It was just hilarious. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the other one about the person, um, you know, dying in the property and, you know, well, that that wasn't exactly how it how it went down. But but it had enough truth but in it. it had, but it was similar. Yeah. Um, so, and a lot of them, they just make up. I'll yeah. tell them little funny anecdotes and then they just expand on it. No, so. I think it's brilliant. I love love catching up with that and just being like, mm, I'm connected <laughs> in this little way. It, it, you, could, you could legitimately have a podcast about true stories of real estate agents, though. That would, oh, you could. Oh. <laughs> Both sales <laughs> and probably. Uh, oh, anything. exactly. Yeah. Oh, Spin-off we'll, we'll, episode. We'll, 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 we'll flag that one. <clears throat> All good. All righty. Well, I think that uh, should wrap us up for today. Thank you so much for coming in, Julie. It was Thanks an absolute me, pleasure. Guys. You're a superstar. Oh, don't don't yeah. think so. But anyway, it's very nice to be asked. I was happy to come. And thanks, John, for your last episode because Julie will now be taking your seat from now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been good having you for the first 20 episodes. It's been a pleasure, guys. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a rotating McGregor chair. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll get good enough to get Luke on one yeah. day. <laughs> No, look, that was a lot of fun. Thank you for uh, coming and discussing property management with us. Um, Thank you, guys. Hopefully we can get you on again. And Yeah, we'll, we'll I know. We've only just scratched the surface too. We so really have, yeah, yeah. There's so much more yeah. we could get into. And you're doing a great job with your podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you to say, thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> 
Excellent. All right. We'll uh, we'll sign off there, boys, and we will and lady. Yep. And we will uh, <laughs> and we'll catch right. everybody next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank All right. you. Catch you See, See you later. Bye. Thank you very and much. And now for a legal disclaimer. You have been listening to The Property Pod, produced and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Real Estate and McGregor First National Propriety Limited. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information.